We were supposed to listen to a recording by our bishop this morning, but after our lack of success at the four and people being able to hear it well and understand it, I am going to stand in and preach on the same topic. Now, I can't promise to have the same wisdom our bishop did, but I think I'll be a few minutes shorter, so if that's any consolation. Certainly in this gospel today, we have one of the images that expresses best our life in Jesus Christ, that image of the vine and the branches. It's an image that's easy to understand because just as a branch depends completely upon the vine to live and flourish, so too in our spiritual lives do we depend completely on Jesus Christ. It's by baptism that we're first grafted onto that life-giving vine that is Jesus. It's by word and sacrament in the Eucharist that he left us and that we celebrate here this very morning that we remain in him and are continuously nourished by him. And it's by the sacrament of penance, of course, that we are pruned of anything that is life draining so that in Jesus we can continue to thrive. Yet what in the end will be the evidence that all of this is taking place within us? The simple answer to that is love. That's the fruit that's produced by any who truly remain in Jesus Christ. But when we say love, it's such a misunderstood concept in our culture today because the predominant notion of love is kind of restricted to romantic love. And that isn't the notion of love that appears in our second reading this morning in which St. John would remind us that we must love not merely in word or speech, but we must love, he says, in deed and in truth. This is the love that's intended when Christians refer to the virtue of charity. And how often, when we think about it, do we pray in the second Eucharistic prayer that together with our Pope and Bishop, we will progress toward the fullness of charity. To understand that kind of love, though, we need look only to the cross before us because that is the fullness of charity. A love so pure that one would even lay down his life or her life for the good of others, even those who would ignore that gift or ever appreciate it. Truly, to date in the world's history, the perfection of charity has only been lived by Jesus Christ himself and was certainly proved not only in words, but in that deed of obediently going to his death by crucifixion for the salvation of all of us. But we who are grafted onto him and who are remaining in him are not only to admire him, we are to try to imitate him as we are being nourished by him to love a bit more purely, love a bit more wholeheartedly, love a bit more selflessly each and every day. In the Gospel of Matthew, we are reminded just whom we must love if we would love as Jesus himself loves. And that is those who are sometimes challenging to love, admittedly. The poor, the hungry, the homeless, the stranger, the sick, the imprisoned. That is why every year, under the leadership of our bishop, the local church, which isn't just our parish, it's in fact the whole diocese, is asked not just to give, but to try to sacrifice for our annual Catholic Charities Appeal. Because we who are the branches of this life-giving vine who is Christ have to keep striving to love 
just as Jesus himself loves. Therefore, whether the apostolic works which depend on the funds that are generated by this annual appeal benefit us personally or not, but ideally, if they do not, we should give as generously as possible to them because then our charity is all that much more selfless in imitation of Jesus himself. So to the many good works of Catholic social services or the pastoral ministry to the sick or the ministry in our houses of correction or in St. Clair's an after program for women who have been incarcerated, or for the apostolate that welcomes newcomers to our church, especially those from Latin America, or those apostolates that provide spiritual and pastoral services to so many for a whole host of reasons in our name as the church. Let us try to give from our heart and from some money that we might have preferred to save and spend on ourselves. Better yet, let us even consider pledging so that our giving isn't just once, but indeed throughout the months of the year, so that others can be even more greatly blessed. And we may move that much closer toward living as Christ himself is nourishing us to live, which is in perfect charity.